This is Ken Roberts inviting you to listen to another adventure of Casey, crime photographer. Ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Our adventure for tonight, The Suicide. The auditorium of the Metropolitan Theater. Its seats sparsely occupied with bored and restless playgoers who have been witnessing the opening of a new drama by an unknown dramatist. Uh, I give him a little hand. I'm not that much of a hypocrite, Annie. Of all the lousy shows I've sat through in my life, this takes the cake. It's about the worst I've ever seen. Well, it's finally over. Let's get out. Yeah. Well... At least we came in on passes. <laughs> a lot of these poor people paid for their seats. Wish I had, then we could have walked out. Mm, as a guest of the producer, you were sunk. I don't care anything about the producer. Carla Ashby, who authored this mess, is a nice guy when he sticks to the real estate business and doesn't try to write plays. The blonde who played the lead is his wife. Yeah, it's his wife, Nedra Millard. Mm, was she terrible? She can't act, but you got she's got a face and figure that are something. Oh, mm, she's... Good looking, all right. Uh-oh, there's Lee Gorman standing in the lobby, and he spotted me. Oh, is he the producer who sent you the ticket? Yeah, tall, curly-headed guy there. Oh, hello, Casey. I see you stayed for the finish. Yes, Lee. <clears throat> uh, Miss Williams, Mr. Gorman. How do you do? Miss Williams. Well, there's no use asking how you like the play, of course. Well, I don't think you could be kidded, fella. No, it's a complete flop. One of those big mistakes we all make at one time or another. Closing it up? Well... <laughs> the insanity to keep it on. Carl feels pretty bad about the whole thing. Uh, the author, Miss Williams, uh, Carl Ashby. Uh, this was his first play. And so Casey told me. Whatever made him think he could write a play, Lee? He doesn't know anything about the theater. He's a businessman. Well, they say everyone in the world has more or less secret ambition to write a play. And uh, he's married to an actress, you know, our leading lady. Never needed a starring vehicle. Yeah, but how could she have been fooled? Well, how was I fooled? I've been in show business longer than Nedra has. Now, believe it or not, Casey, we thought the thing read well and it looked good in rehearsal. Now, I know we were only kidding ourselves. Well, I must be getting backstage with the bad news of our closing. Uh, nice meeting, Miss Williams. Well, thank you, Mr. Gorman. See you later, Casey. Well, so long, Lee. Better luck next time. Well, I hope so. Come on, let's get out of this theater, Annie. Yeah. Boy, I, I can't figure it. What? This flopperoo. Lee Gorman's a smart showman. Oh, well, he's never had any big smash hits, you know, but he knows the theater. He must have known this play didn't have a chance. Well, as he said, everybody makes mistakes. It was too big a mistake for him to make. Another funny thing, too. Lee Gorman's the kind of a guy some gals fall for pretty hard. Ooh, I had a gorgeous surprise when I met him. He's a beautiful hunk of man. Hmm? But, um, what's funny? Well, uh, before Nedra married Ashby, quite suddenly, about a year ago, the gossip was that she was crazy about Gorman. Yeah? Yeah. It's funny he and Nedra and Ashby are together in this thing. Yeah. Hmm. Well, it is. Well, you've made me curious. Yeah, I've made myself the same way. Huh. So Gorman, to you, is a, a, a beautiful hunk of man. Why, huh? Mr. Casey, can you be curious about my motivations, too? Hello, Casey. Good evening, Miss Williams. Evening, Ethelbert. Hi, pal. Say, I didn't see you two last night. Where was you? <laughs> <laughs> We went to the theater. Yeah? What'd you see? The turkey starring Nedra Millard, produced by a beautiful hunk of man, Lee Gorman. Beautiful hunk of... Hmm? <laughs> well, Mr. Gorman must be seen to be appreciated, Ethelbert. Uh, I ain't ever seen him. But I know the author of that play you saw. Mr. Ashby comes in here every so often, and he's a nice little guy. I felt terribly sorry for him when I read all the mean things the critics wrote in their reviews this morning. Well, he'll get over the panning he got. A guy with his dough doesn't have to worry because he isn't the second Eugene O'Neill. What was the play about? The critics used up so many words making fun of it, they didn't have room to well, say... Well, it was mostly concerned with a suicide, Ethelbert. Suicide? Mm -hmm. One of those heavily tragic domestic dreamers. Yeah, with the corniest dialogue I've ever listened to. 
why should a cheerful, pleasant little guy like Mr. Ashby write about suicide? What I'd like to know is why he should write... Uh, tell me after I answer this phone, Casey. Blue Note Cafe, Ethelbert speaking. Uh, just a minute, your city desk, Casey. Huh? Okay, okay. Hello, Burke. Uh, uh, Del High Towers. Yeah, I know. It's a swanky apartment building on East Parkway. What do we cover there? What? Uh, we're on our way, Burke. What is it, Casey? Hmm? Carl Ashby didn't only write a bad play about suicide. He's just jumped from a window 20 stories up. It was a suicide, Casey. Open and shut. Ashby was alone here in his apartment. He wrote a note saying he was going to do a hair carry, and then he walked to that window and stepped out on the air. He wrote a suicide note, Logan? Yeah, uh, addressed to his wife. Mm, what did it uh, say, Captain Logan? Well, I'll let you and Casey see it in a minute, Miss Williams. One of my tech men has it out in the kitchen right now. He has his micrographic camera set up there and is taking the usual fingerprints and vital evidence shots. Carl oh, Ashby's one of the last guys in the world I'd figure is a suicide. He'd got everything to live for, lots of dough, his swell home, good-looking wife. He took an awful licking last night, Casey, that play he wrote. Yeah, yeah that play. It was razzed by every paper in town this morning, yours included. He was a sensitive guy. It hurt. Mm -hmm. I can understand that. Yeah, so could I, Ann, if, uh, if I didn't have a hunch about that play. A hunch? That setup was all wrong. What do you mean? Where's Nedra Millard, Ashby's wife? In her bedroom, down that hall, crying her eyes out. It is nice to watch a pretty woman cry, Casey. But thought you said Ashby was alone in this apartment when he... He was when he jumped. Mrs. Ashby was down in the lobby talking to the night porter when his body hit the sidewalk. Talking to the night porter? Yeah, about a job she wanted him to do. Look, the doorman was there also, and two elevator boys. If you think maybe she pushed her husband out that window, she has a perfect alibi. This is a big apartment. Don't the Ashby's keep servants? Yeah, maid, cook, and butler. They were all sent to the movies tonight because Ashby wanted to be alone. Well, Mrs. Ashby actually sent them out, I imagine. Naturally. The woman of the house usually attends to such matters. Oh, come on in, Sergeant Dressler. Here's that suicide note, Captain. We've given it the full treatment. We're finished with it now. Thanks, Sergeant. Now, this is the note Ashby left, Casey. Mm, I want to see that, too. Yes, so do I. Now, here. There's a piece torn off the top. Well, Ashby must have torn it or used a sheet of paper already torn. The note's just as I found it, and I came into this room ahead of everyone else. Uh, read it. My beloved wife, when life becomes a mockery, one can only long for the sweet repose of death. I am a failure. That poor guy means that play he wrote. Mm. I have failed not only myself, I have failed you, whom I love with all my heart. He figured he'd done Mrs. Ashby a dirty trick, because as the play star, she came in for some of the panning he got. Mm, that's one way of translating the statement. He goes on. The shame, the bitter agony of shame I suffer. Oh, brother. It's a terribly corny letter, Casey. Yeah, terribly corny is right, Ann. Hmm. You finished? Yeah, the note's unsigned. Well, I told you we verified Ashby's handwriting. Yeah, but he didn't sign it. There's no name at the bottom. It just ends. You said it was addressed to Mrs. Ashby, Logan. It starts off with my dear wife. Yeah, but not my dear Nedra. The top of the page is torn off. And what does that mean to you, wise guy? Mm, nothing yet. But it's put a punch behind my hunch. I think it's a lead on how to add up. So you're going to do some arithmetic. Mm-hmm. Well, five bucks says you'll get nothing out of it but mental exercise, which won't do you any harm. This case is open and shut. Uh, uh, Captain. Mrs. Ashby. I have my nerves under control now. You were most considerate and kind in letting me go to my room. I had to be alone for a while. Now, if you want to question me uh, some more... I'm sure you've already told me all you can, but sit down, Mrs. Ashby. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Casey. Hello, Nedra. You, you haven't met Miss Williams. It's Nedra Millard, Mrs. Carl Ashby. Miss Williams is a reporter on my paper. How do you do, Miss Williams? How do you do, Mrs. Ashby? We're sorry to be here under these conditions. You have our deepest sympathy. Thank you. You knew poor Carl rather well, Mr. Casey. Yes, and I liked him. Captain Logan tells us you were downstairs when he fell. Yes, in the lobby, I... We heard someone scream outside then, an awful dull thud. Carl was lying on the sidewalk. Well, I'll 
Try not to think of it, Mrs. Ashby. You'd, uh, you'd left Carl alone up here how long before it happened? Maybe? I don't know. Five minutes, maybe ten. When you left him, you had no inkling. Oh, of he... course not. I knew he was greatly depressed about the play, but I never dreamed. Oh, well, take it easy, Mrs. Ashby. You thought Carl's play had a chance of success, Nedra? Oh, I wouldn't have encouraged him to write it. I wouldn't have acted in it if I hadn't. You only realized your mistake last night. Yes. All of us make mistakes, don't we? Big ones. Uh, uh uh-huh, yeah, big ones. Uh, Miss Williams and I have to get back to the paper with our stuff. Uh, So long, Nedra. Oh, and Logan... I'm taking your five-buck bet. So you did your arithmetic last night, Casey. That's right, Logan. You want to hear my totals? I'm listening. Okay, here they are. Anedra Millard married Carl Ashby for his dough. Uh Uh-huh. But Lee Gorman remained her white-haired boy. She and Gorman planned a nice, safe way to get rid of Ashby and to get his money for themselves. You know, the dear old perfect crime. Now, I've heard of the perfect crime. Yeah, well, you almost swallowed this one. Tell me more. Well, Ashby, like millions of other people, wanted to write a play. Uh, have you ever thought of writing a play, pal? Well, uh, uh, I've never had the time. Well, Ashby had the time. <laughs> never had the time. Well, Ashby had the time, so he wrote his play, guided by his wife and Gorman. Guided? Sure, they knew the theater. He'd naturally take their professional advice because he was an amateur. Now, this play dealt with a suicide. That suicide note you found after he dropped 20 stories was written for his play. What psychic power tells you that? The torn off top of the note tells me that. Have you ever read a play in manuscript form? No. Well, the name of the character who is to speak is written either above the speech he's to make or at the upper left-hand side of the speech. Now, in this case, I'm sure it was written above. That's why the top of the page was torn off, to get rid of the play character's name. You think? Yes. Now, what's more, the whole text of that note was in keeping with a corny dialogue Ashby wrote for his play. It was stilted, unnatural, it wasn't real. You saw the play with the lines of that note in it? Of course not. Gorman and Nedra aren't dumb. Sometime before the play went into rehearsal, I think one of them got Ashby to write the page you found in his own handwriting as part of a suggested script change. Of course, naturally, the change was never made, but the page was carefully preserved. And whoever got the page from Ashby after he wrote what was wanted took care that only the writer's fingerprints appeared on it. Sure. And Gorman produced the play, knowing it would make a laughing stock of its author... The ridicule certain to be heaped on poor Ashby was to provide an apparent motive for his suicide. And how do you think was Ashby actually killed? Lee Gorman did the job. Gorman led himself into the apartment with a key given him by Nedra, pushed Ashby, who was a much smaller guy than himself, out the window, planted that suicide note for you to find, and took the freight elevator down the back while everyone was out front gawking at the body on the sidewalk. Mm. You have a very nice theory, Casey. Well, I'm sure it's more than a theory. It's a fact. How are you going to prove that? Well, listen, now, don't you cops want to do anything for the dough we taxpayers shell out to you? Go on, you get the proof, pal. Suppose I already have pretty good proof that your theory is all wet. Huh? A quarter of a million bucks is a lot of money, isn't it? What are you getting at? I had a talk with Ashby's lawyer this morning while you were still wrestling with your arithmetic. He told me that Ashby took out a $250,000 life insurance policy in his wife's favor less than a year ago. Less than a year ago? Uh And like almost every other life insurance policy, it automatically becomes void if the holder commits suicide within 12 months of its date of issue. Oh, wow. Yeah, then, uh, and as things stand now, Nedra loses a quarter of a million. That's right, Sherlock. Do you still think she helped arrange a murder that would look like a suicide? Mm, no. And Gorman wouldn't either. Not with that much Jack involved. Well, maybe... Well, maybe Ashby's leaving her so much dough they can afford to skip that policy. Huh? She'll get a nice piece of change, but Ashby's lawyer says he wasn't as rich a guy as people thought. Mm. Did Nedra know about that policy? Well, Ashby's lawyer says she knew about it. Yeah, well, who's the lawyer? Ben Cartwright. Is his word good enough for you? Yeah. When Cartwright tells you anything, it's so. Hmm. Well, did he say that she knew about the suicide provision? 
No, but everybody knows about those suicide calls. Well, not everybody, Logan. Not everybody. Gorman's a bachelor. He's never had any reason to take out life insurance. And sharpshooting gals sometimes miss their target through overconfidence. Mm, everybody does make mistakes, Logan. I'm paying a call on Ben Cartwright. Why? I'm still convinced that my theory about Ashby's suicide is right. And I'm going to try to prove it by the thing you think disproves it. That insurance policy. The theory you've just given me of the possible manner of my client's death is very disturbing, Mr. Casey. Mr. Cartwright, I'm laying all my cards on the table because I need your help. To your knowledge, did Mrs. Ashby know about the suicide clause in that $250,000 policy? To my knowledge, no. I never discussed it with her. Well, do you think her husband ever discussed it with her? I doubt it. When I took out life insurance, I didn't tell my wife. Healthy-minded men pay little attention to that suicide clause, and I always regarded Carl Ashby as a healthy-minded man. Well, so did I. And I didn't know him as well as you did. Carl Ashby was my friend as well as my client, Mr. Casey. How can I help you? You handled all of his affairs? Yes. Mrs. Ashby knows that, of course. She must know it. Well, Captain Logan quoted you as saying that Ashby wasn't as rich as people thought, but his widow stands to collect a nice piece of change. A very nice piece of change. It would be unethical of me to tell you the extent of his estate, but it's large. Now, Mr. Cartwright, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know how your legal ethics will tie up with what I'm going to ask you to do. But where murder is concerned, I think everybody's ethics can be stretched a little. And Carl Ashby was your friend. Go on. Well, I'd like you to call on Mrs. Ashby today and talk to her about that insurance policy and form your own idea as to whether she knew about the suicide clause. Now, if you decide she didn't know about it, give her to understand that her husband left her less than, than say, $10,000. This is ridiculous, Mr. Cartwright. Carl was worth over half a million. He told me so. Financial reverses can be more easily concealed from a man's wife than from his attorney, Mrs. Ashby. Only $10,000. Of course, had he died by any other means than suicide, you'd receive an additional quarter million. Yes, a quarter of a million. Well, I must be leaving now, Mrs. Ashby. Goodbye. Goodbye. What? Oh, oh, yes, yes. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Cartwright. She seemed to be thinking very deeply when I left her, Mr. Casey. You did a swell job, Mr. Cartwright. Nedra Ashby is going to be watched very closely from now on. And so is Lee Gorman. <laughs> Lee, this is Nedra. Oh, how are you, darling? I've been trying to get you for the last hour. Well, I just came home. Lee, I've got to see you tonight. Oh, yes? What about? I can't tell you over the telephone. I'll come to your apartment. Uh, what time? Nine o'clock. Okay. And be alone. Well, you're here right on the nose, Nedra, my sweet. Close that door, Lee. Oh, sure, darling. Now... Let me take your wrap. No, no, I'll keep it on. Say, you're upset about something. Hey, the cops haven't... No, the police haven't bothered me. Your scheme has worked out swell, Lee. Carl is considered a suicide. Well, I told you he would be. But you didn't tell me that the $250,000 life insurance policy he took out for me is no good if he kills himself. Why, what do you mean? I won't get a dime of that quarter million because Carl supposedly took his own life. Well, I, uh, I don't get it. No, because you don't know anything about insurance policies. And I didn't. But I've learned about them today from Carl's lawyer. And he told the you The main that... thing he told me was that I'll get only $10,000 from Carl's estate. Only? Yes. Th My rich husband was practically broke. That insurance policy was the biggest thing he had to leave me. And I'm going to get that quarter of a million. Uh... You can't get it if the company won't pay. 
They'll pay on every form of death but suicide. They'll pay on proof that Carl was murdered. And they're going to get that proof. Are you crazy? We killed Carl, you and I. No, Lee. You killed him, just you alone. I don't think I heard you correctly, my dear. You planned and executed some of the principal details of the scheme. You even made it possible for me to get into the apartment that night. And while I made it possible for you to use the freight elevator without danger of detection, I was establishing a perfect alibi for myself. You mean that you... This gun will tell you what I mean. Oh. Well, I... What do you want me to do? Sit down at that desk. Oh. And then? Then you'll write a confession that you and you alone killed my husband. No. Sit down and write. No, you can't get away with this. If I wrote such a confession, do you think I'd stick to it after it was written? If you're fool enough to try and pin this murder on me, I'll tell everything that happened, and you'll go to the chair with me. I'm not a fool, Lee. Write that note. I... I get your plan now. After I wrote what you want, you'd... You'd put that gun to my head and press the trigger. Then you'd stick the gun in my hand, and I'd be thought of suicide. Yes. Yes, that's your plan. Take your pen and write. No. Since you mean to kill if me, you I... you take another step, I'll shoot you now. Oh, I... Sorry, Mrs. Ashby. I don't like to shoot guns from ladies' hands. Captain Logan! Cops, you've been listening. Yes, we had a front row seat for your little performance on that fire escape with a dictaphone rigged so we heard everything you said. And some very interesting things you and Lee said, Nedra. Weren't they interesting, Casey? I... He did it all, no matter what you heard. Lee Gorman did it all, not I. You little liar, you planned the whole thing. It was your scheme. It was all you. No, 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 it was That's you. That's enough. Take these ex-lovebirds away, boys. Ah, uh, just a minute, Logan. I want Lee and Nedra to pose for a couple of pictures. Uh, oh, yes, and from you, I'd like five bucks. <laughs> So them two sweetie pies turned against one another, huh, Casey? Well, you should have heard him after Logan got him to headquarters, Ethelbert. Each made a full confession of what the other had done. <laughs> They're going to wind up sitting in the same piece of hot furniture. Hot furniture? Oh, you mean the electric... Oh. How'd you figure Mrs. Ashby would go to Gorman's apartment after that lawyer talked to her, Casey, and do what she did do? Well, there wasn't anything else she could do to salvage that 250 grand insurance. And Lee Gorman was right in his theory, Ethelbert. She meant to shoot him when she got his confession and make him appear as a suicide. You know, I'd say that Nedra Millard Ashby ain't a very nice lady. Check, pal. You can say that again. But, uh, hmm, a certain person I know thinks Lee Gorman a beautiful hunk of man. Um, and tell Ethelbert what you did with the $5 bet that you won from Logan, Casey. What? Uh, oh. <clears throat> well, okay. I, I bet it back to him, plus five more, that the Red Sox would win today. And they lost. Well, everybody <laughs> makes mistakes, don't they? Well, that's what I've always said. Everybody makes mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> Did you say the Red Sox lost today? adventure of crime photographer starring Scott Cotsworth as Casey came to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. <laughs>